Hey there, uh, my name is Ned Twig, and I'm here to show you Git for diffplug. So uh, down here we have a list of commits, and if we click one, then we can see who made it and when, and what they changed. If we click this, we can see what it was that they changed. Um, we can double click this if we want more space, and we can double click these files if we want to see just the file on its own. Um, so similarly, if we right-click one of these commits, we can open it as a folder. Um, and so now we can browse all of its files um, and look at them as though they were checked out somewhere, even though they aren't checked out anywhere. So another special thing about git for diffplug is the way that it can navigate history. Um, so let's say we want to see what's going on in version 3.4.2. Um, so it can animate us there, which helps us to know where it is relative to where we are. Um, and if we wanted to see another tag, let's say um, 3.4.0, um, it'll navigate us there. Um, so there's this little trick, which is if you mouse over a tag or a branch, um, then it'll animate there. And then when you mouse off, it'll go back to wherever you were before. Um, if you want it to stay, you have to click and then it'll stay. Um, so in this case, we can tell something about what's going on, but it's it's, sort of, it's obscured by the fact that there's so many uh, branches to the left here. Um, so if we want to focus on just these two tags, we can control click them both and do a right click and then view relationships. Um, so now we can see just the commits uh, between these two tags and their common parent, which in this case happens 3.4.0 is their common parent. Um, so this is really useful for generating release notes and uh, checking that release notes are right if you don't trust them. And so diffplug's ability to focus on the commits that matter um, really comes in handy when you're synchronizing remotes. Um, so here we have each local branch and uh, as a row, and then each remote repository as a column. Um, and I, we have another video that goes into further detail on um, cases where you're maintaining a fork and, and how having multiple remotes can be really handy. Um, but the gist of it is you can, the only branches you're seeing here are the branches that are out of sync between your local branch and a remote. And uh, when you right click, you can see just the actions that make sense um, for this state between your local branch and the remote. So it's really handy and, and can um, help focus your attention uh, and save you time. One of the kind of fun things is uh, we have a graphical ref log. So if I delete my master branch, um, normally this would be a minor catastrophe, um, but with diffplug it's really easy because we can go to the ref log and pull up the ref log for master and we can see that this is where master was and then it was here and then it was here um, and so I can uh, put it back wherever I would like it to be. Uh, very easy. But none of this is actually the exciting part about diffplug. Um, the exciting part about diffplug is that uh, nothing that we showed you today is specific to code. Um, so if you have stuff that isn't code, such as some images, um, diffplug can deal just fine with that. Um, and if those images change, then diffplug has an image differ all set up to help you understand them. Um, if something changed and its name changed, so Git didn't identify it as a move, um, you can drag one onto the other to force it. Um, so now we can put a pin on the tail and nose of one and the tail and nose of the other. Um, we can use these pins to align it. Um, so now if we overlay one on top of the other, uh, we can wipe between them and it looks like one was doctored and uh, slimmed up a little bit. So we can do some interesting things with images, but the really interesting stuff is structured data. Um, so this is a Simulink model, which is a block diagram programming language that's common in the aerospace and automotive sectors. Um, so there's block diagram, state charts, and even just regular old code all embedded in the same file. Um, and so diffplug has no problem looking at this. Um, if one of these files changes, 
uh, diff clerk has no problem showing you a diff of those changes. Um, and so this lets anyone work with the workflow of a programmer. And this isn't limited to Git. So we can take one of these files and drag it here. So this will put it on the diff list. This is like a scratch pad kind of thing where you can put files. Um, so we can, uh, diff plug also has a subversion client and we're also uh, taking pre-orders for this as part of the Kickstarter. Um, so we can look at the history of this uh, subversion repository straight on the remote. And it looks like some dummy uh, put a zip file into version control. Um, the diff plug is fine with that. We can uh, diff images or whatever inside of zip files just fine. So we can take a file from this zip inside of this SVN and add that to the diff list. And so now we can compare uh, these two files. So some file from Git and some file from a zip in SVN. And we can verify that these are the same and that these uh, are a little different, have these changes in them. And furthermore, we're not limited to changes between files. We can also look at changes within a file. So if we wanted to compare this block to this block, we can drag one to the other and diff just these. So we've built these version control clients for Git and SVN, and we've built these differs for text and image and Simulink, and we have some others under wraps. And what we'd like to do is foster an ecosystem of differs where, so you can build your differ in a way that's agnostic to the version control system or to the client. So it shouldn't be specific to diff plug or something that GitHub makes, it should be an open standard. And uh, we've done a little bit of work in that direction uh, internally. And so we are proposing a standard called open diff and you can see it on GitHub, slash diff plug open diff. Um, and so this is just our draft of what an API could look like for standardizing these viewer differs across version control systems so that everyone can use the programmer workflow. Um, so we've released parts of our infrastructure as open source, uh, Durian, Durian RX, and Durian SWT. So we've got some open source chops, and I think we have the internal technology and experience to really make diff for anything from anywhere come true. So why are we doing the Kickstarter? Um, everything I've showed you, you can download for free from diffplug.com go to download and you see we've got Win, Mac, and Linux versions available. The Git client is ready to use. I use it every day, um, but it's got some performance problems. It's got some missing features got some bugs. There's definitely a lot of work left to do. Um, and the subversion client, probably not actually ready for day-to-day -day use yet, but it will be soon. So on one level, this is just a simple pre-order. Uh, the going rate for a Git client seems to be about 80 bucks. Right now you can download it for free, and this version of DiffPlug will always be free, uh, but later we'll start charging. And if you buy it for $40 now, then that'll save you $40 later. And we'll use the money from the pre-orders to grow the team and build all this stuff faster. And if we hit our stretch goal, then we'll extract our diff API outside of diff plug so that it's an open standard um, and release it as open diff so that anyone can build a differ that'll work with any version control client that implements the host API. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm really looking forward to any questions you might have.